inside that area, it's counted. So that's the main thing, is that make sure that the stone will fall into that area. And that's not too difficult. It's a big area. After this, it's time for us to slaughter the animal. Arrangement for that, we will talk about it later on, inshallah. After this, now, once these two things are done, we can shave our head. And after shaving the head, the haram is off. With the exception of one ruling, and that is sexual relationship. Anything connected to that. These things are not allowed other than that. Using normal clothing, perfume, cutting hair, nails, all of this is now allowed. After that, we will be doing tawaf al ziyarah, which is the main tawaf of the hajj. Once that tawaf is done, all the rules of haram are gone now. Now a person is just like a normal person. But we will not stay in hotel yet. We will not be staying in Makkah yet. Now we are still in Mina. 10th, 11th, 12th, at least three days. And if a person chooses according to his plan and whatever else, stays for the 14th. These are the days when people are supposed to stay in Mina. The main ibadah of those days is stoning the shaitan as far as physical action that can be seen is concerned. But as we see that that doesn't take too long. And that can be really everything of the whole day. So the main thing is Allah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمْ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ When all of these things are done, rituals are done, فَذْكُرُ اللَّهِ كَذِكْرِكُمْ آبَاءَكُمْ Remember Allah as you remember your own parents. As a person who's away from the family for a long time and remember the parents and remember the family the way you remember them, remember Allah that much and even more than that. And that especially in those days they used to get together and now they all will be coming up with poems and stories about their families and everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stopped us from doing all of that and He said, these are the days of dhikrullah, of doing the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And unfortunately, you will see the same jahiliyyah back. We sit over there, on all, and all we are talking about is my business and your business and how we do there and how is communities. No, these are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wiped out those things of the jahiliyyah and He told us, فَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَذِكِكُمْ أَبَاكُمْ Now, once all of this is done and uh, 10th, 11th, 13th, 14th, uh, 13th, uh, we've we done all of these things. Then, before we leave, we have to do one more tawaf, which is wajib, and that is called tawaf al wada This tawaf is wajib. After we have performed this tawaf, we have done everything that we had to do, and we are out. This is, in brief, the whole journey of the hajj. Inshallah, this side, as we go along, we'll keep on talking more details about all of the each and everything that we talked about has details to it. And at the more important than this, as I said, is the details of utilizing the trip and making the best use of it so that inshallah, as we come back, we are better people than we have left. And we are better believers and closer relationship and connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than we have left with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of us for this trip and forgive us for every wrong action, word, doings, whatever we have done. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of that and give us tawfiq to make a hajj mabrur, a hajj that is full of reward and be able to refrain from all kind of sins and disobedience and anything that will ruin our hajj. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to be able to do the hajj again and again in our lives. And for those who are not going this year, may Allah give us tawfiq to go next year and keep on going and going and give us tawfiq to always visit those great places and benefit from, them, from visiting them too. Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us, accept our efforts and accept all of our prayers. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين. If there are any questions at this time, I think we're late. So if there are any questions... Still we have two more weeks, inshallah, before we leave. Can I ask one quick question? Yes, sure. When men are in the haram, um, you can't wear a jacket or sweater or anything like that. But can you wear like a shawl? Uh, since this question came up, uh, and sometimes it concerns us uh, in preparation for hajj, may be something helpful. And that is, 
When we say any clothes that are sewn are not allowed during Hajj, remember it doesn't mean that anything that has stitches on it is not allowed. Say if uh, your watch belt has stitches, it's not allowed, or your slippers have stitches, they are not allowed. This is not what it means. It means wearing regular clothing that are sewn to fit a human being wearing it in such a place. If someone has a jacket and he puts his jacket on top of him without putting the sleeves in, even that is okay. Sleeping bags are sewn. But they are okay. So, anything that is sewn in a way that it could be dressed, those things cannot be dressed in that form of dressing it. Other than that, the stitches, sewn, and everything, the, all of those things are okay. Shawl is okay. Niyat for Hajj Badal. That you make the intention of doing the Hajj on behalf of the person that you are going to be doing the Hajj for. So, at every step when you make the intention, you make the intention on behalf of that person that I'm doing this on behalf of such and such person. From the time you put your ihram on, you will be making the intention of making it on behalf of that person. Tawaf, you're studying it, make the intention of doing it on behalf of that person. You're studying the sai, make the intention of you're doing it on behalf of that person. You are sacrificing the animal, make sure that you make the intention that it is on behalf of that person for whom you are doing the hajj. That's the easiest thing to say, and there are more details that inshallah you can find out.